lovely beautiful sunny day in London and I'm going to be driving for a long time to get to another place at the other end of the city so I thought I should bring you guys along for a ride and uh, talk about rubbish just rubbish so um, so I've been thinking about making some videos about cars which I love very much and mainly to talk about cars with respect to everyday driving just like an average Joe I'm not a race car driver I'm not an expert like the folks on Top Gear but I've had 25 30 cars in my life and I love driving I drive everywhere um, and I think it would be nice for people to know what it actually feels like to be driving around every day going to work and doing all kinds of things in various types of cars and then compare what, what I think and maybe give you some insight into what it's like. So this one is a Range Rover Vogue. It's a 4.4 litre V8 diesel. I'm not going to tell you about not to 60 or uh, the road handling. I'm sure you can find plenty of videos to tell you that. What I'm going to talk about is the general feel, the comfort, the luxury, the everyday, just everyday workhorse car. So, first of all, I think it's important that most people want to know whether it's economical. Range Rovers have a bad reputation from the old days when they had big fuel guzzling petrol engines and they just burnt fuel like hell. My parents used to have a few of those and yes they did use a lot of fuel but this one is superb. I mean you don't buy a 4.4 litre V8 if you're trying to have an economical car. I guess you'd buy a 1.1 1 .1, uh, or I don't know maybe a smart car so you buy this car for luxury and you know you're going to have to pay X amount to enjoy the luxury but it's not crazy it's not what people say oh you have to pull a fuel tanker behind the car and in the city I find it does between 16 and 20 miles to a gallon which I think is brilliant for a car which is two and a half tons and is like a big leather sofa you almost like you're sitting in your living room just driving around so yeah it's not that bad on the motorways it does about 35 miles to a gallon which is brilliant uh, but in the city I live in London where you're stuck in traffic jams 24 7 so I don't find it that bad and you don't get tired, the seats are so comfortable if you're stuck in traffic, you're stuck in traffic, there's nothing you can do, but at least you're in a comfortable car. Um, there's so many other things about this car that I absolutely love, and one of the things is its old-fashioned, boxy, fridge-like appearance. It's because I really like the old-fashioned, traditional Range Rover look. Um, I know many people like the Vogue and the new Range Rover Sport with their sleek, curvy or rounded body styling, but I personally prefer this previous model to the latest one which is this square boxy old-fashioned looking one. I don't like them tinted, they look very gangster and this one is just a normal country bumpkin standard car. So, um, 
going back to the features and comforts, I mean, the entertainment system, I must say, is a generation old. It's probably what they should have put in a car 10 years ago, but it does the job. So the sound system is fantastic, but it's Harman Kardon. So it's, it's brilliant. The sound quality for such a big cabin is fantastic. The sat-nav is atrocious. It is it gets you from A to B, but it prompts you five billion times to do five billion things which you don't want to do, keeps telling you there's a traffic jam when there isn't, and tells you that road is clear when you're stuck in a traffic jam. It uses the TMC stuff, but I don't think it's very accurate. So that's sort of the annoying bit, but otherwise it's got a built-in Bluetooth, it's got a television screen, well, it's got a built-in TV tuner, so as soon as you drive off, the passenger can watch TV and you can look at the sat-nav or other things, which is quite a nifty little feature. Um, it plays DVDs and all kinds of things which are pointless in the car unless you're a driver uh, when you're waiting for your passengers to come when you're trying to kill time, but otherwise I think it's uh, just pointless. Well, leather very good quality not the finest but it's rugged and tough and comfortable so that's very very important and the fact that it's thicker than the supple Nappa leather that cars have is great because this is a utility car you're going to load it up with stuff and you want it not to fall apart or rip the leather I carry my dogs in the back and not in the boot I can put them on the back seat and their paws and everything, they don't scratch the car, so it's, it's a good sign. It's got tons of room. I've test driven a few other cars, SUVs, to see if I would like something else, but unfortunately I love this car because of the comfort, the air suspension is like a bouncy castle. With the roads in London you certainly need a bouncy castle. What else? Um, it's got the usual sunroof, aircon, um, heated seats, usual things. So it's pretty good. Um, see, I'm not very prepared for making videos. Maybe I should make a list of kind of things that you guys might be interested in knowing. And then I can talk about those. One really cool feature, it's got two visors, which I really like. So if you have sun from the side, you pull this one and turn it to the side, and then you have another one hidden behind it. So if the sun moves to the front, you don't have to keep flipping. Quite a clever thing. Um, cup holders, plenty of charging spaces, a little fridge in the middle, which isn't really a fridge, it's just a cooler to keep four cans of drinks cold um, other than that nothing extraordinary just it's the sheer beauty of this car the wood paneling the finish the dashboard it's traditional and old yet <coughs> exceptionally beautiful one thing that they've changed in this particular model is adding, gosh that was an ambulance, jumped right in front of me. So um, where was I? Yes, the what I was talking about is the dashboard. Instead of having dials like the traditional old Range Rovers, this one's got an LCD screen and when you switch on the car, it displays all the dials and everything. It looks like a normal thing, but it's actually an LCD screen. So at night, it, depending on the light in front of you, it goes brighter or darker automatically. Um, so you can see it. Quite a nifty little feature. One thing it lacks is you, can, you can't convert the speedo from kilometer, miles to kilometers, because when I travel around Europe, I'd like it to just switch to 
kilometers because the speed limits are all in kilometers but it doesn't have that feature and I don't know why because this is an LCD screen it's computer controlled you should be able to display whatever you, you'd like you can change you can display the kilometers I think they appear as a digital speedo but it's not the same as looking at the actual speedo and also it doesn't show you the digital miles per hour so that would be quite handy that if you could switch it so you can see the needle and you can see the digital again all of that is code could easily be written but don't know why they haven't done it maybe it's something they should consider so yeah it's a beautiful lovely lovely spring day in London um, I don't know why I'm wearing this because I don't really need it it's so warm I will stop for a coffee and take it off hmm. so London is a very amazing city it's my home and I love it very much but I think everyone has a love-hate relationship with London and that's because it's overpopulated and very expensive roads are narrow and I think what's even worse is that the government and the local uh, authorities like the councils and boroughs they are they don't really care they just want to look good in the eyes of the voters that's all it is it's not about doing the right thing it's about being seen to be doing the right thing so as long as they're doing something that people like they'll do it so what they've recently done is they've made roads very narrow in most parts of London they have reduced the speed to 20 miles an hour from 30 and they've widened the pavements on one hand everyone is talking about going green going green which I don't really personally care about so much because as long as China India and America keep polluting the world we're all gonna die we all share the same atmosphere so it doesn't matter what a tiny little speck of an island like England does but in any way there is a lot of hoo-ha about um, the going green yet they're slowing down traffic public transport is atrocious it's expensive it's delayed it doesn't work and it's overcrowded they don't want people to drive so give them an alternative make the public transport so cheap and so amazing that you would have no choice it would be a no-brainer so back to the roads the roads are so narrow or the lanes are so narrow and they widen the pavements it's not like this is an amazing sunny city all year round where people walk and cycle it rains 70% of the time it's cold the rest of the time so no one walks but we have massive pavements and the traffic traffic is slow and stuck therefore adding to the pollution and but no to the voters it looks really good oh we are slowing the traffic down we are preventing people from coming into the city we are making the pavements wider for the public how many people actually walk and then you have all these bus lanes cycle lanes so cyclists go wherever they like and same thing for the buses they have a bus lane but they drive all over the place into whatever lane they want and it's okay because as long as you are run by London Transport or any of the other authorities or uh, local councils it's okay if you're a truck owned by a big company you can stop on a double yellow I've complained about it so many times on um, High Street Streatham where one of the companies big companies um, I think it's Iceland yes they have a truck that comes every morning at 7.30 to quarter past 8 stops on a double yellow and loads and unloads for 45 minutes causing massive traffic jams 
but transport for London have refused to give them a ticket. Every time I write to them, I send them pictures. They just tell me, oh, uh, we will have a word with uh, the management. Well, if this was an individual, they would get a ticket immediately. But because it's a company, you can get away with it. And the same thing for cyclists. They should have number plates. They should have insurance. That will make sure that they don't do dangerous things. At the moment, cyclists weave through traffic and do dangerous things, but they're not held accountable. They're risking their lives and they die. But then if a car driver hits a cyclist and the cyclist dies, that car driver has to live with it for the rest of his life that he killed someone. That's not a, an easy thing to live with, no matter what people say. So the car driver or the bus driver or whoever it is will have to live with it, will have to suffer the legal consequences and all of that because a cyclist didn't bother and was driving dangerously. And because they can't get tickets, they can't get points and their license, they just do whatever they like. They're risking their lives but if a car driver is driving at 100 miles an hour on an empty road, he's risking his life as well, but he would get a ticket. A cyclist is doing 30 miles an hour in, on a road where he doesn't have the same safety as a car, it's okay. It's just this, this whole system is really nuts. and. I'm probably ranting about this, but I think someone needs to raise these points. It's just endless stupidity that we live with and we put up with it. I think our world is changing. Some of it is for the good and some of it for not so good. And that's because we're becoming too politically correct, too overly middle that the Conservative Party and the Labour Party, you can't really tell the difference, they're almost the same. You should have some differences and some opinions and some freedom. I mean, we want to have um, a free economy, we want to have healthy competition, but in our real lives we've hushed everything up. No one says anything, no one wants to discuss anything. You just either do it behind closed doors with your friends and your family, or you keep it to yourself. That's why people don't change their mind, they don't change their views, because everyone is hushed up. It would be good if people can just say what they think, and not in a, an awful way, but obviously in a nice way, so you can have a discussion, a debate about things and maybe change each other's minds and be enlightened rather than stifled. So yeah, that's why I believe I'm going to get quite a lot of abuse on this because I'm quite outspoken. But I believe life isn't about just taking everything and accepting it. You should challenge things and make up your own mind and make some informed decisions. By the way, I'm now going over Tower Bridge and it's amazing that I drive over this twice a day, every day, to work and back. There's the Tower of London over there, but it's you just don't appreciate what you have because you see it every day and the people around the world who come to London spend so much money to come and see these sites well we just live here and take it for granted I must say when I go abroad and I come home I am so relieved that I live in England I've traveled to I don't know pretty much everywhere in the world that I've ever wanted to go and there's nothing like home, there's nothing like London. It is truly a phenomenal place, 
and I fully understand why so many people from around the world come to visit, so many people come to live here, even though there's 12 million people in the city, it's still an amazing, amazing place. So much history, architecture, culture, theatres, museums, bars, clubs, you name it and we have it. So I'm truly blessed to be living here and have all this history and tradition and culture and civilization around me. Not many people in the world are blessed with this. So I'm grateful to the powers of the universe. That's the thing in London. Uh, because of all these traffic lights, traffic jams, narrow streets, it's 24 miles door to door from this, from where I live to this place. And it's going to take me an hour and a half. Why? So, but hey ho, there's some good things. Well, there's millions of good things about London. Traffic, transport are not so good. But the rest of it compensates for these kind of issues. But I must say, I really find it very fascinating and interesting when these politicians come and talk about, I'm going to make London green, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Ken Livingston came, he increased the waiting time at traffic lights, he widened the pavements, made it difficult to drive through London. That's That was his way of preventing people from coming into London. Because they won't like it, they won't come. People don't come to central London because they like it. It's because it's a necessity, you have to. For example, to cross over from the south side of London to the north side, you have Tower Bridge is the last bridge to cross over. After that, you have the Blackwall Tunnel, which is extremely difficult to get to and through narrow back streets it's closed sometimes and it's much much further away there should be a couple of more bridges so hence all the traffic both from the north side and the south side has to go over Tower Bridge and causes so much congestion if the politicians really want to do something build a couple of bridges the, the trucks another point that I keep making why are the trucks allowed in the centre of London during peak hours? Deliveries and all of this can be done at night when there's less traffic. So you have cars, narrow roads and 20 miles an hour. And then you have these trucks which have massive engines and cause so much pollution stuck in traffic all the time. So I don't think the politicians want to do anything. They just want to bluff you. They want to make you believe they're doing it for you. All they want to do is get into power. Once they're in power, they'll build connections, build networks, and indirectly fill their pockets and create a good future plan for themselves. Like Tony Blair, for example. He makes millions now, still gets uh, protection and all of that from the government and what's he doing for the average Joe and the poor masses he didn't get into power with the Labour Party to help the poor he wanted to get rich like every other bugger in this place so it's just ridiculous that we're all so stupid that we keep voting for these people might as well have a kingdom and let the queen rule at least there'll be one person rather than 400 of them okay so we're going through what's called the Limehouse Link Tunnel it's a little tunnel that goes under some water reservoirs and uh, other buildings and stuff because there was a lot of congestion I think in this part of town
town, they decided to put a tunnel to go underneath all of this to come out to Docklands, um, where the Canary Wharf building and all